In 2004, the band Green Day staged one of the greatest comebacks in music history with the release of American Idiot, an album that would reach number one in 19 countries, win two Grammys, contain five chart-topping singles, sell 14 million copies worldwide, lead to a Tony Award-winning musical, and go on to be considered not only one of the greatest albums of the decade, but one of the greatest albums of all time. But all of this almost never happened. This is the story of cigarettes and valentines. Following the release of their album Warning in 2000, the band was in a serious slump. By 2001, they'd released a greatest hits album, and in 2002, a compilation of rarities and b-sides. This seemed like a good place to stop. The band had been on a steady decline since the massive success of Dookie in 1994, culminating in Warning being a commercial and critical failure. Lead singer of the band, Billy Joe Armstrong, even asked the band, do you want to do this anymore? The band agreed they wanted to keep making music together, but things needed to change. Armstrong describes, what had started as three 17 year olds getting high and bashing out punk tunes had become a business and over time, a declining business. Resentment built, none of it articulated. The other two members of the band, bassist Mike Durnt and drummer Trey Cool, began to see Armstrong as the band Nazi, having total control over the creative process. And Armstrong grew frustrated with Durnt and Cool's passive aggressive criticisms of his new songs and began to censor himself, ditching song ideas out of a misguided fear that they'd be shot down. When it came time to record a new album, they decided to add weekly band meetings to their schedule. Trey Cool recalls, We didn't hold anything back. Before, Billy would write a song, then get stuck. The imaginary Mike and Trey in his head would say, That song sucks. Don't waste your time on it. He stopped doing that and became totally fearless around me and Mike. During these band therapy sessions, they wrote and recorded their follow-up to Warning titled Cigarettes and Valentines. During this time, the band wrote 20 songs that were ready to be mixed and mastered. But what happened next is highly contested. The band claims that in the summer of 2003, the hard drive containing the master tracks for all 20 songs was stolen from their Oakland recording studio. Owner of the studio, John Lou Casey, disputes these claims, stating, it was not taken from here. Everybody's writing that it was taken from here. It was not. I mean, they took their hard drives with them at the time. There was nothing ever stolen from here. Surveillance, safes. I mean, there's multiple steel doors that you'd have to get through too. Whatever the truth is, the band still had demo recordings of the album Cigarettes and Valentines. So they contacted their longtime record producer, Rob Cavallo, asking him what they should do. Cavallo asked the band if they honestly felt that Cigarettes and Valentines was irreplaceable. The band agreed it was not. Once they decided not to re-record the album, that's when the masked Europeans arrived. In 2003, Green Day, disguised as The Network, released the album Money Money 2020. Lou Casey stated, The anonymous Euro synth quintet was the catalyst that allowed Green Day to get over themselves and eventually record the best music of their career. Green Day actively denied that they were the network for a decade, even insulting the band. It wasn't until 2013 that Mike Dirt finally admitted that the network was Green Day in disguise. There's a long-standing rumor that tracks from Money Money 2020 by the network were actually meant to be on Cigarettes and Valentines, but the band vehemently denies any connection between the network and the lost Cigarettes and Valentines recordings. According to Green Day biographer Mark Spitz, it's seriously implausible that Green Day would follow a folk punk release like Warning with tracks like Joe Robot. But in a way, the network and the errant Cigarettes and Valentines project are intertwined. Lou Casey states, the network was about finding a way into discovering who they were gonna be and what they were gonna do on American Idiot. But before seriously starting work on a new Green Day album, Armstrong went to New York to get drunk and soul search. 
and it wasn't until he returned home that he found his subject while watching TV footage of the US troops invading Iraq. Politics. And the rest is history. But what was on this stolen album? What songs were meant for cigarettes and valentines? Since the album disappeared, the band has been tight-lipped about its track list, only confirming five songs. The first was Too Much Too Soon in a 2010 interview with radio station Q104.3, followed by releasing a live version of the title track, Cigarettes and Valentines, on their 2010 live album, and finally confirming three tracks in 2011 during an interview with DJ Ross Star. These songs were Waste Away, Dropout, and Sleepyhead. Waste Away and Sleepyhead can be further confirmed on the electronic press release kit for Warning released in 2000. This video is absolutely absurd. It's narrated by David Cross of Arrested Development and meant to create hype for the album. Welcome back. I'm Cash Mahoy. I'm a dentist and I'll be your host as we travel back in time to see what the future holds for Green Day. In this video, there are a few frames where you can see a handwritten track list of songs written for warning. In addition to Waste Away and Sleepyhead, this track list also includes Cluster Bomb, which was renamed to Letter Bomb and included on American Idiot. This shows that a version of Letter Bomb without references to American Idiot was in the works since warning and potentially meant for cigarettes and valentines. The case was blown wide open in 2019 when John Roker released a photo of potential American Idiot B-sides. John Roker is known for directing the 2015 documentary Heart Like a Hand Grenade, which was filmed between 2003 and 2005 following the making of American Idiot, making him closely connected to the band during this time. This list includes four of the five songs already confirmed to be on Cigarettes and Valentines, numerous tracks rumored to have been on the album, songs released on other albums, a few completely unknown songs, and most surprisingly includes two songs that would later appear on Green Day's second side project, Foxborough Hot Tub's debut album, Stop, Drop, and Roll. So let's break down this track list. Too Much Too Soon, Shoplifter, and Governator were officially released as American Idiot B-sides. Lights Out, and Horseshoes and Hand Grenades were released on 21st Century Breakdown. Walk Away was released on Trey. Broadway and Pedestrian were both released on Foxborough Hot Tub's album Stop, Drop, and Roll. 19th Nervous Breakdown is a Rolling Stones cover recorded during the Nimrod sessions. And the only songs we don't have are Too Young, Lately, End of the World, Waste Away, and Drop Out. I firmly believe that all of these tracks could be on Cigarettes and Valentines, with the exception of Governator. Governator was the nickname given to Arnold Schwarzenegger when running for governor of California. Arnold did not announce his run for governor until August 6, 2013 on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. If Cigarettes and Valentines was lost by the summer of 2003, the timeline for this song to be on the album does not line up. To note, the song Shoplifter contains the line, Jimmy Caught Stealing, making it less likely that it was meant for cigarettes and valentines, but the lyrics could have easily been changed to fit American Idiot, just like they were for Letter Bomb. The mystery of cigarettes and valentines has led to numerous theories on the album. The most popular theory is that the album was not stolen. The theory goes that Green Day didn't like the album and just scrapped it, some believing that they intentionally destroyed it, or just lied about the tapes going missing. The biggest piece of evidence to support this theory is that in the 17 plus years the album has been missing, it has never been leaked online. If it were stolen, it almost certainly would have been leaked by now. Another popular theory that I already touched on is that the network is connected to Cigarettes and Valentines. While most of the songs by the network are clearly not standard Green Day songs, there are two songs that fans have pointed out that might have been meant for cigarettes and valentines but were modified to fit the network's sound. Those songs are Rochambeau and Supermodel Robots. The presence of Foxborough Hot Tub songs on the leaked American Idiot B-sides confirms that Green Day is willing to rework songs for a side project. 
The band has constantly denied any connections between the network and cigarettes and valentines, but they also lied about being the network for a decade. My favorite theory is that Wake Me Up When September Ends was meant for cigarettes and valentines. Wake Me Up When September Ends is the only song on American Idiot not directly linked to the story. The song is about Billy's father, who died in 1982. The line, 20 years has gone so fast, implies that the song was written in 2002, making it fit the timeline for Cigarettes and Valentines. But admittedly, the lyrics could have just been changed to fit the rhythm of the song, rather than saying 22 years have gone so fast. The following are highly speculative rumors that have little to no evidence. Dropout became Brutal Love based on the lyrics containing Dropout frequently near the end of the song. Sleepyhead became Lights Out or Lazy Bones. Waste Away became Oh Love due to the lyrics containing Waste Away in the chorus. Too Young became Too Dumb to Die. End of the World either became Last Night on Earth from 21st Century Breakdown or Rochambeau by The Network due to the line, I don't believe in the apocalypse, I don't believe in the end of time. I don't believe in solar eclipse. I don't believe in valentines. There are also a number of songs that never received an official release that have been rumored to have been on the album. Minnesota Girl, which was released on Greenday.com in 2001 and performed live three times since 2002. Boys in the Bathroom Stall, which was released on Greenday.com in 2002. Foiled Can, which was also released on Greenday.com in 2003. Dreamcatcher, which was performed live in 2010, Oh Girl performed at a sound check in 2010, and Olivia. Olivia is one of the most commonly rumored songs to have been on the album, but this is only because the song was performed live at the same concert Cigarettes and Valentines debuted on. Two other songs frequently rumored to have been on the album include When It's Time, which was released in 2010 for the American Idiot original Broadway cast soundtrack, and Hearts Collide, which fits the Valentine theme and has Valentine in the lyrics. Sadly, we are still left with so many questions, and as you can see, a mountain of rumors. And even though it's been 17 plus years since the album has been lost, I'm still hopeful. Green Day has released B-sides, rarities, and unused songs before, and they will do it again. And I believe that someday we will have the lost album, Cigarettes and Valentines. So what do you think? Was the album stolen? Did Dropout become Brutal Love? Was Olivia meant for the album? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe to see more videos like this. This is Mike with All Things Lost. See you soon.